Welcome to the fourth lesson in the Google Analytics training series. In this lesson, you'll learn about the exploration reports and advertising reports in Google Analytics. We're going to walk through the steps to create custom reports. This is a great way to dig into your data and they complement the standard reports we've already covered. If you've missed the previous lessons, you can find links to them in the description below this video. We're going to start by covering the exploration reports, which let you combine dimensions and metrics to create your own reports. Let's head to Google Analytics. I've already opened Google's demo property, so let's select Explore. The exploration reports let you create different custom reports and visualizations. Across the top, we can see the different types of reports we can create. We can create freeform reports, which include tables and other types of charts. Funnel exploration, which lets you visualize particular steps you want people to travel through. For example, steps to complete a lead form or steps in your e-commerce checkout. Path exploration lets you visualize the paths people take through your pages or other actions they take on your website. Segment Overlap, which lets you apply multiple segments to see if users are included in one or more of your segments. Cohort Exploration, which lets you group users based on the days, weeks or months they visit your website. User Lifetime, which lets you view additional lifetime user metrics. And in your own property, you will also find User Exploration, which lets you drill down on individual users. This report isn't available in Google's demo property. Selecting any of these options will load a pre-configured template. So if you're getting started, then I recommend creating each one to explore the options. Now let's navigate back. We're going to create a new report from scratch in a moment. So we'll be selecting blank. But before we do, I also want to mention that traveling down, you'll see any reports that you've created or that have been created by other people with access to the property. Okay, now let's create a new blank exploration report. We're going to walk through the steps to create two exploration reports. I'm going to show you how to create a report that shows you any custom campaigns that are sending people to your website. And we'll also walk through the steps to create a funnel visualization for the steps we want people to take in order to convert on our website. Let's get started. Okay, on the top left corner, we can name our report. Let's name this report Campaigns. Now I'm going to change the date range. I'm going to select the last 30 days and click Apply. Next, we need to add the elements we want to use in the report. We can see there are options to create segments, add dimensions and add metrics. Let's click the plus sign next to dimensions. A dimension is a row of information in our report. So for this report, I want to show the names of the campaigns sending traffic to the website. So let's search for campaign. And I'm going to enable the session campaign dimension. There are lots more dimensions we can choose from, but we're going to keep things simple today. So let's click import. Now let's click the plus sign next to metrics and let's search for and select sessions. Total users. And key events, which are used to report on conversions. Now let's click import. Now we need to add the elements to build our report. We can double click to add them or drag them. Let's double click session campaign to add it under rows. And let's double click total users, sessions and key events to add them under values. We can see that the first few rows aren't for campaigns. So direct, not set and organic. We need to remove these. To do this, we're going to add a filter to our report. Let's scroll to the bottom of the second column, select filters and choose session campaign. Now let's choose does not match regex, which lets us enter a regular expression. 
This is more advanced, but just copy what I'm about to enter and you'll be fine. And if you'd like to learn more about regular expressions, then check out the extra resources below this video. Now I want you to enter caret backslash open parenthesis full stop asterisk backslash close parenthesis dollar sign. This will exclude any campaigns that start and end with a parenthesis. Now let's click apply. We've now created a report that only includes our campaigns. Great work. Now we're going to create one more exploration report. So let's navigate back and create another blank report. Let's name the report conversion funnel. Adjust the date range. And this time let's select free form at the top of the second column and change this to funnel exploration. Now in the second column, I want you to look for steps and click the pencil icon. Now you can specify the steps you want people to complete on your website. We're going to focus on e-commerce events, but you can base your funnel on any of the events you've collected into your property. For example, you can create a funnel based on page views to see how people travel through particular pages on your website. Okay, let's name the first step begin checkout. And for the condition, let's search for and select begin underscore checkout. This will mean we include people in our funnel when they trigger the begin checkout event. Now let's click add step. At the top of the second step, we can see it says is indirectly followed by. You can select this and change it to is directly followed by. For example, choosing this option would mean people won't be included in the funnel if they view another page in between steps. For my funnel, I don't mind if people view other pages or perform other actions. So I'm going to change this back to the default of is indirectly followed by. And on the right, you can see there is an option to set a time limit. So the step needs to be viewed within a certain period of time. I'm going to leave this disabled. Now let's name the step add payment info. And for the condition, let's search for and select add underscore payment underscore info. Now let's add one more step. Let's name the step purchase. And for the condition, let's search for and select purchase. Now let's click apply on the top right corner. We can now see the steps we've defined and the visualization at the top shows the number of users who make it through each step. Below the visualization, you can see the number of users who drop off at each step. And you can see a breakdown of metrics for the funnel in the table. You can customize your funnel report further. For example, you can enable the make open funnel option, which means users can enter the funnel at any step you've defined rather than needing to travel through the first step. And you can change from a standard funnel to a trended funnel to see the trend for users based on the funnel step and the date range. Now that we've looked at the exploration reports, we're going to cover the advertising reports in Google Analytics. These reports let you view the relationship between your marketing channels, view the performance of any Google Ads campaigns, and they let you apply the available attribution models. Let's navigate to advertising. The advertising snapshot provides a top level summary for your marketing channels. At the top, we can see the performance for any Google Ads campaigns. This lets you compare the total number of conversions to those coming from Google Ads. So this shows you performance for conversions configured in Google Ads. Moving down, we can then see the overall number of key events broken down by channel. If there are any automated insights, they'll appear on the snapshot. And traveling down, we can see the top paths leading to key events. The conversion performance report is like the card at the top of the snapshot we just looked at. It lets you compare the performance of your Google Ads campaigns to the overall performance of your marketing channels. At the top, you can adjust which Google Ads accounts are included in the report. 
and which conversions from these accounts should be used in the report. Now let's open the Attribution Paths report. This report provides a visual representation of the marketing touchpoints people engage with before converting by triggering a key event. For example, we can see some rows show us that some users engage with our organic search listings multiple times before converting. And as you travel through the rows in the report, you will also see paths that include multiple channels. This helps you understand the relationship between your channels and how they drive key events on your website. I also want to highlight that you can customise the report by changing the dimension used for the paths. By changing the attribution model used for the report. And by choosing which key events are used in the table and visualisation. The next report is the Attribution Models report. This report lists our marketing channels on the left. And moving to the right, we can see the number of key events and revenue for each channel. These metrics are reported twice. The first set of metrics use the last click attribution model and the second set of metrics use the data driven attribution model. So the report allows us to compare how credit is given to our marketing touch points based on these two different models. On the very right of the report we can then see the difference between the two models. So we can see the percentage increase and decrease when we compare them. And we can also change the attribution models we are comparing in the report. To do this we can select a new model from the drop down. I'm going to leave the defaults. To use the report we want to look for significant changes between the models. Changes that have a positive percent mean that we're potentially undervaluing the marketing channel when we use the last click model. And a negative percent tells us that we're potentially overvaluing a marketing channel when we use the last click model. Next up are the planning reports. Let's select the all channels report. This report is like the conversion performance report we looked at earlier. But this report looks at all of our channels. So it's not quite as focused on Google Ads campaigns. It also includes additional metrics. So if you are running Google Ads campaigns or you're importing cost data from third party advertising networks, you'll see values in the ads cost, cost per key event, ads clicks and other columns. Next is the Google Ads report. This is just like the all channels report but focused on your Google Ads campaigns. It also lets you access additional Google Ads dimensions to report on campaign performance. You can change the dimension using the drop down. Finally the advertising segments report lets you view how many users are available for targeting purposes in Google Ads. This lets you see if your audience lists meet the minimum list sizes for remarketing campaigns. So that's how you can create custom exploration reports in Google Analytics and an introduction to the reports you'll find in the advertising section. Are you going to create an exploration report? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments. And to learn more about Google Analytics, please take a moment to subscribe to this channel. I will be releasing more tutorials. In the next tutorial, we'll cover important configuration options. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.